Hello, it's Laura here with another interactive card tutorial. This time I played with the Puppy Love Dynamic set to make this super cute dog swim. As you will soon find out, I didn't use any difficult mechanisms for this card. I could have complicated things a little bit more by making the doggy move its head while it swims, but finally decided to go easy on you guys. Let's start by inking a piece of Ken Oliver watercolor paper with three tones of Distress ink. To save some time, I previously embossed one of the sentiments from the Birdie Brown Friends with Finn stamp set in silver. I have a tendency of always using the same three colors, so this time I chose faded jeans, stormy sky and broken china. After applying a light layer of each, we can go in with the Make Wave stencil to give the panel some interesting texture. So here are the card base and panel cut out of Summer's Plash cardstock. As always, you'll find the measurements in the description box as well as here on the screen. This is the panel that we'll use for the mechanism. I will later cut it down to a little under 3 inches tall and I've already marked the spot where our double slider loop slot die will go. Let's just adhere it with some tape and run it through our die cutting machine. Now we can cut off the upper part of the panel and insert a cellophane strip in the slots. Mine is 9 and 16 of an inch wide and long enough so that I can adhere one end with some score tape and carefully trim the rest with a pair of scissors. The pull tab is from the Interactive Pull Tabs Dynamics set and even though I use heavyweight cardstock I like to die cut too and layer them with some score tape or liquid adhesive to make it really sturdy. I've already stamped the word pull from the interactive label stamp set on it and now since we don't need the whole thing I'm simply marking how long I want it to be and cutting it with my scissors. And next we just need to attach the pull tab to the cellophane strip. I've taped my panel to the craft mat so that I'll get it as straight as possible. Make sure that the joint or the seam of the cellophane strip on the front of the panel is as low as possible so that the pull tab can slide effortlessly. Okay, let's assemble the card. We won't need the whole dog, just the head and the paws. I die cut mine out of white cardstock and actually layered two of them, one with holes cut for the ears so that it would be totally flat. I colored everything except the black parts with Copic markers and added some glossy accents to the eyes and nose. I needed the paws to be clearly visible, so instead of using the small ones from the die set, I used this shape, which is actually the dog's belly. I simply drew two vertical lines on each piece with a brown marker and shaded the lower edge. You will also need a couple of acetate strips. These are a half an inch wide and two inches long. We can attach them to the back of the paws at an angle with some score tape or glossy accents. I chose to adhere the paws with some score tape. To make them symmetrical, I just flipped the first one over and used it as a guide to glue the acetate strip to the second one. This card can be prone to snagging and if we want to avoid that, we could add a layer of glossy accents to the back of the paws to give them more volume. If you need to, you can do it after you've finished the card. In order to hide the mechanism, but not too much of the dog, we need to die cut the main panel. I use the largest die from the A2 stitched rectangle stack set 1 dynamics and then the wave border from the pop-up wiper card components dynamics. I like to place the die as symmetrically as possible so that there aren't any strange looking peaks on the sides. And we only need it to be a smidge taller than the mechanism panel. My initial plan was to ink the border with some distress ink, but I like it like this. The lighter shade reminds me of sea foam. I'm just quickly going to file the edge since there is some paper residue or burr there. A quick recap to make sure that we know where each of our elements go before we start assembling the card. 
So the mechanism panel goes on top of the card base and then the main panel. We also need to see if there's enough room for the puppy's big head and its paws. Everything fits, so we can start by gluing the first paw to the back of the pull tab. I'm holding it in place with my left hand, and now I'm going to flip it over to add some score tape with my right hand. It would have been easier to do in advance, but I wasn't sure if I would need to trim the strip of acetate or not. Now I can let go of the main panel and test the mechanism before moving on. We just need to pull the tab and hide the paw to adhere the other one to the visible strip of cellophane on the front. I'm using the grid of my craft mat as a guide to get it as symmetrical as possible. And this time I already have some exposed score tape ready on my acetate strip so when the pull tab is in its correct position, I can adhere it to the cellophane. The time has come to grab the foam tape and adhere it both to the front as to the back of our mechanism panel. This first piece acts as a stop so that the pull tab won't go any further. I was a little bit too generous with the foam tape the first time and actually had to make a new panel and redo it. This type of card works best with just a little bit of foam tape, a couple of strips to guide the pull tab on the back, and thin strips around three of the four sides on both the back and the front. And since this is taking forever and probably is very boring to watch, I've made a little sketch that shows the placement of the foam tape so that we can skip ahead. Both panels have the same width, so it's easy to adhere them together. Let's see if the mechanism works before we continue. Yes, those paws are pedaling perfectly. At this point, if you want to, you can trim the edge of the mechanism panel so that it won't be visible from the side. After adhering the ensemble to the card base, we can test the mechanism again and proceed to gluing the poor puppy's head in place. This needs to be very well done or the left paw can snag on the edge of the head. I'm using a generous amount of liquid adhesive and pressing down with a bone folder to make sure this doesn't happen. We're almost done. To complete the card, I colored a couple of the fishes from the Fish You Were Here dynamic set with a silver gel pen and added a black eye to both of them. Now I'm simply applying some drops of glossy accents all over the panel. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you'll try out this other way of using the double slider loop slot dies. Catch you next time! Bye bye, hasta la próxima.